Greetings, brothers, sisters, Facebook, YouTube, family. This is your brother, Jurite Muhammad from the UK. Here again with um, yet another of one of my um, book reviews. And I hope you are well. I hope you are all uh, rested. I hope you are whatever you're doing. You're doing it safely. And in these troubled times, especially, I hope that you are keeping conscious of your environment and also the times which we are living in. With that said, let me get on to my book review. The title of this book for this day is The Golden trade of the moors i know we have heard of other books the moors in spain there's even a book the moors after spain by stanley um, paul so yes this is another book which i will deal with now i hope you've all heard of it if you haven't it is a really really good book to have um, in terms of information about the trade, the sub-Sahara trade, and also what went on with um, what we call the Arab um, peoples. So this book here is by Edward William Boville. Now, um, Edward William Boville was really a part of the British gentry. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's basically the upper class, um, the upper class people, the more affluent um, people in England. And he was a part of that society. Um, he was Obviously, he was being a part of the gentry. He was well-educated. Um, this book here, we're talking 19... 58 when it was first um published oxford university press now obviously i'm from the uk and everybody holds um oxford university with some um esteem and respect it's said to be um very good in terms of education um oxford cambridge other places so yeah the author of this book edward william boville was educated um a part of the british gentry and this book the golden trade of the moors was one of his um most famous but he was an author of many other books now with that said and done this book here what can we say when you read this book understand that it is coming from a European perspective of things which um, everybody has their bias yeah and this book is also has its bias but it is it is still a very 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 good book to have in your library because you have to have these landmark books which it is a landmark book from a european perspective yeah the golden trade of the moors because the moors had so much impact on europe in terms of education in in terms of um technology you know so the more we study about the moors the more we get to understand the influences of the moors on Europe and Edward William Boville was no exception he understood that because he was a part of the high society the gentry in the UK in Britain and he understood that and that's what spurred him on to really writing this book um, you know this book it's not a heavy heavy intense book but you have to have something about you because the language which is written in, you know, 
you have to have something, um, a level of intelligence about you. But it is a very, very good book. Now, when we're dealing with the contents of the book, it deals with, first off, the Roman um, period in Africa. And many people don't understand. Romans were in charge of a lot of North Africa. In, a, in You know, we're talking pre um islam the romans were in charge you had the roman empire you had the persian empire further east but the roman empire was in control of north africa they had they were in the states of what we called um tripoli and carthage what we call the carthage what we call algeria today and morocco you had a lot of roman influences in there but so he deals with this in this book. He deals with it. But then he also deals with the tribes of North Africa, the indigenous tribes of North Africa, and how they um, basically fought back against certain Roman states. And these African um, tribes, communities um, came together. And by coming together, they became a powerhouse within themselves. So he deals with this. He deals with the tribes of the Toregs and other people of the um, this the Sahara region and the South of Sudan region. He talks about um, the Arabs and how the Arabs viewed Africa. Now you've got to understand: you had Arabs. Arabs were, you had the black Arabs, you had the white Arabs, you know obviously the original arabs were the black arabs but still you had the lighter skinned arabs that were um becoming more dominant in certain areas so you would get a coming and going out of the arabia into africa so you get there's a lot of movement going on a lot of movement going on and this book deals with certain things it deals with how the arabs came together with certain african tribes also and you know through conquering they pushed the romans out of certain states of north africa so the arabs were in one sense conquerors but they were also liberators as well you know so we got to understand the dynamics of what was going on and in this book by edward william boville um like i said He's a well-educated man, well-studied man. He uses references from um, Arab historians, chronalizers, who, who chronalize the history of travels around um, the Maghreb area and um, Africa, you know, as certain Europeans called it, you know, Africa. Very interesting book, very educational book goes on to the medieval period in africa um it goes into the actual the trade salt gold the movements of which states were dealing with it and how it was being moved you know me i like you to purchase the book to study it for yourself because that's where you're going to get the benefit of the book from studying it yourself golden trade of the moors I will be dealing with the other books, which is Moors in Spain and Moors after Spain. There are, the, there are two other books by Stanley Poole, but this is by Edward William Bovell. Okay. So what else does this book actually deal with? It deals with Matza Musa of Mali. It deals with Ibn Battuta, who are who was a traveller who chronalised, he put a lot of stuff down on what he saw, what he came into contact with. Um, he deals with the golden trade, um, the quest for gold, the discovery of Guinea, um, Wagawara. These are states and areas in Africa, um, tribes that were dealing with, they weren't primitive. They were, they were, they were um, craftsmen, they were doing things on the um, continent of Africa. He deals with the rise and fall of the Songhai Empire. Now that within itself is so, so interesting. 
brothers and sisters. These are times when Europe was really going in. They were dark ages now. And Africa was at its rise again. You know, it was like a second or third golden age within Africa. Yeah, we go into on um, the desert armies. Um, he goes into all of that interesting medieval period of the African continent. And, you know, he's just bearing witness from a European perspective. And then obviously he ends up with the um, 19th century revolutions within Africa, which you're talking 1800s when you're getting all the rush coming into Africa, um, the changes within the continent because the European powers were becoming more um, great because the influence of the Moors in Europe. Um, so basically, we rose to a certain height and then we educated Europeans and then they come and they enter back into the continent of Africa with their armies and with technology which they built on which we have given them and they subdue Africa so this book is a very very good book brothers and sisters I've just given you a short overview of the book but I believe that with your study um, we can be more enlightened and we can understand that we can help each other and we can um, grow and by doing that we can get through some difficult times that may be coming ahead so yes brothers and sisters this is another book review the golden trade of the moors by edward Bovell. so yes it's been a pleasure as always bringing you the books hopefully um, you can like share subscribe to keep this channel going um, because without the viewers this channel means nothing I can only um, bring my interests which are books and books from an African and Asiatic perspective so what do I give this book? What do I give it? Out of 10, I give it a 7.5 to 8. It is a good book. It is a good book. But you've got to understand that it's from a European perspective. And the time that it was written in, um, you have your little bias. But it is a good, good read. So yes, it's your brother, Jurite Muhammad. Until my next book review, stay strong and keep the faith, brothers and sisters. Peace.